Hey bag lady, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make my Baker Street bag. The Baker Street bag is perfect for a confident beginner and if you've made my easy leather hobo bag, this is a slight step up. The Baker Street bag features a recessed zipper and you can make it in either quilting cotton or another fabric like cork or leather. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, before we begin, you'll want to print out your pattern instructions for the Baker Street bag and the pattern piece. So there's only one pattern piece for this particular pattern. And when printing out the pattern piece, you always want to make sure that the one inch square does indeed measure to one inch. And so mine does indeed. Even though I'm printing from the same printer each time, you always want to measure that square because it can throw things off if the pattern pieces don't um, print out at the correct size. So two tips for getting your pattern pieces printed out correctly. You want to always open out the pattern template using Adobe Reader. It's a free program and if you don't already have it, you can download it for free for your device or your computer. And when going to print out in your printer settings, you want to print out at actual size. So not scaling, not fit to page, it needs to be actual size. So go ahead and cut out that pattern piece around the outer solid line. Okay, and you'll want to reference the cutting list in your pattern instructions for getting everything cut out correctly. So I'm using, I'm making two bags. I'm making one of them out of cork fabric. And so um, I'm going to show you how to cut out one of your um, exterior main panels from the cork. Okay, so as you can see from the pattern piece, it says cut on the fold. With cork, I don't like to actually fold it and then draw and then cut out my pattern pieces because that creates a crease down the middle. So what I like to do is I like to draw both halves with a fabric pen or chalk. And so I'm gonna do that on the wrong side of the cork right now. And if you prefer, you can use your rotary cutter. I just prefer drawing my pattern pieces out and then cutting them out with scissors, but uh, whichever your preference, as long as they get cut out. So I've drawn one half and I'm just gonna flip it over to draw the, the mirror image to get that second half on my cork fabric. Okay, so now just, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. And this is one of the exterior main panels. Okay, so there's one of my exterior main panels cut out. Let me show you how I like to cut out if I'm using cotton fabric. So with cotton fabric, um, the nice thing about um, having a pattern piece that cuts on the fold is you can fussy cut and center a design. So let's say that I want to have, um, my fabric has this dog right over here. Say that I wanna have that dog in the middle of the, the exterior main panel. I'm just gonna fold the fabric right sides together in half and make sure that that dog is situated right in the center. So I can see through the fabric. So here's the dog right here. So I'm gonna just have that centered and take my pattern piece and just go ahead and place that on the fold. And again, I'm just gonna draw around the outer edge of the pattern piece. And because this is folded, when I cut it out, it'll have both of the halves just like when I cut out the cork fabric. Okay, so one more thing that we need to do with this pattern piece, there's a dashed line um, and it says fold line for lining pockets. So to cut out those lining pockets, you're just gonna fold down at that dashed line and cut on the fold just as you did with the main panels. So here's, I've got one cut out already and this is what it looks like 
um, when cut out using that pattern piece. So these are for um, the lining pockets. Okay, so one more thing that I wanted to mention off the cutting list is um, if you're making a bag with cotton fabric or a fabric that will fray, um, I, I cut mine the width according to the pattern. So that's uh, two and a half inches wide. So this strap piece is two and a half inches wide. Um, for a bag made of cork, like my example, uh, I decided to leave the edges of the cork raw so I won't be sewing anything or pressing anything so that the raw edges are concealed. It'll be sewn just like this. And so um, it's not in the pattern, but I just wanted to provide a modification in this video. So this strap is the same length as in the pattern instructions, except I cut mine one and a half inches wide. So that's one and a half inches wide if you're using cork, vinyl, or leather. Okay, so let's get to attaching the interfacing to your fabric. So first thing for my lining main panel, I cut the ShapeFlex interfacing, and the ShapeFlex has one side that feels bumpy to your fingertips, and that's the side with the adhesive that will go against the wrong side of the fabric. And I recommend usually using a pressing cloth, but for my videos, I don't use a pressing cloth just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And when you're fusing that shape flex in place, um, I have my iron set at the cotton setting and I just kind of keep the iron moving a few seconds in each spot to get everything properly adhered. You don't want to just plonk your iron down and then move it because that creates iron imprints on the wrong side of the fabric. And you can use a little bit of steam if you wish. And you just want to iron until um, the fabric is tightly adhere to the interfacing and every iron will be different. So you want to just take your fingernail and try to peel back a corner of the fabric and the interfacing. And if it doesn't peel back, then that means it's properly adhered. So that's how you will attach the ShapeFlex interfacing to all of the applicable pieces for the foam interfacing. So here's my exterior main panel. Here's my foam. Some foam interfacings are fusible. So if you have a fusible, go ahead and fuse it. Um, if you're using a leather or cork, obviously you don't want to fuse it because it might melt your fabric. But um, I'm using the Biani Soft and Stable, which is a sew-in interfacing. So I'm going to machine baste the foam to my fabric using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So before I take it over to the sewing machine, I'm going to use some Wonder Clips just to keep the layers together for the basting. And for the basting, you can certainly use a longer stitch length to get the process going more quickly. So I'm going to use a four millimeter stitch length for the machine basting. And again, that's going to be an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm using cork fabric. If you're using a leather or a vinyl, uh, you want to make sure you either use a walking foot or a Teflon foot. So I've got a Teflon foot on my sewing machine and the Teflon foot's got the, um, the white coating so it doesn't stick to your fabric. Um, if you're using cotton fabric, just use your regular foot, obviously. And you'll repeat the same process for attaching all of your exterior pieces to the foam interfacing. Okay, for, for the first section in the pattern, we're going to be making the lining pockets. So they're just slip pockets with dividers down the middle. So one of the easiest pockets that you can make. So take out two of your um, pocket pieces and we're gonna place them right sides together and pin just the top edge. So I'm gonna use my Wonder Clips to, to pin that top edge. And we're going to be sewing that straight top edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, for bag making, generally you want to back stitch at stop and start. And I like to use a two and a half millimeter stitch length. That's my normal stitch length. So if you had it at four millimeters for the basting of the foam, make sure you have it set at two and a half millimeters for the sewing part.
Okay, now we're going to press that seam open, and pressing that seam open will help us get a nice crisp press when we go to press the fabric's wrong sides together. Okay, and you can use your fingers to roll that seam out, but that pressing open helps a lot in getting that edge to be nice and straight. Okay, we're gonna top stitch just that finished edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now you're going to pull out one of your lining main panels and that pocket piece that you stitched in that previous step. You're going to place the pocket right on top and the side and the bottom edges are going to be aligned. Okay, so we're going to sew the sides and the bottom using um, an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to baste it in place. And I actually wanted to have a pocket divider right down the middle so I would have two separate pockets. And so uh, to do that, I'm just going to finger press my fabrics in half like this. And that'll give me a guide for where the center is. And you might not be able to see that crease on camera, but I can see it pretty well from here. So I'm going to take my ruler and line it up and just take my fabric marker and draw a line straight down. So after I do that basting um, an eighth of an inch, the sides and the bottom, I'm going to come start from the bottom and I'm going to sew right on top of that line and you want to make sure to backstitch up here so that your pocket doesn't come apart. So you can take your wonder clips to, to hold that in place and then we'll move this back over to the sewing machine. Okay, and then we're going to sew down that center line and the reason we're sewing from the bottom to the top edge of the pocket rather than the other way around is sometimes if you start sewing from here you get a little bit of fabric bunching up as you go along and then that creates a, a big pucker down at the bottom but if you start from the bottom it'll just push the fabric as you go along and it'll be even by the time you get to that that edge of the pocket right there. Okay, and you're going to repeat the same process with the second lining main panel and pocket so that both of the line ma lining main panels have a pocket attached to it. Okay, so you want to pull out your four zipper panel pieces and your zipper. So we're going to mark on the right side of one of the zipper panel pieces first. So we're going to be sewing the zipper, but we need to start and stop sewing a half inch in from each end. So I'm just going to make a mark there that's a half inch in from this end and again a half inch on the other end. Okay, so the zipper is going to go face down and this tail end of the zipper is going to be placed at that first half inch mark right there. Okay, and use your wonder clips to hold that in place and just go ahead and pin it the rest of the way down. And you might find it helpful to transfer that half inch marking onto the zipper tape. So I'm looking over here, here's the marking on the fabric. I'm gonna transfer that to the zipper tape so that I know where to stop sewing. So I'm gonna start sewing from here, the tail of the zipper, 
and I'm going to stop sewing where that line is. And you'll want to switch out to the zipper foot on your sewing machine for this series of steps. Okay, so the zipper foot's on my machine and we're going to be sewing with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. I'm going to actually unzipper my zipper so that it's a little bit easy, easier going to sew. And we're going to start right at that zipper tail right there. Again, and again, I stopped sewing right at that, that marking that I made right there. Okay, so after that first zipper panel is pinned in place, you can go ahead and leave the zipper unzipped for now. It'll just make things a little bit easier. Grab a second zipper panel piece and place it right on top. So the fabrics will be right sides together and this zipper tape will be sandwiched in between. And again, pin that edge of the zipper, the same edge of the zipper that you pinned in the previous step and make sure the edges of the fabrics are aligned too. Okay, we're actually gonna be sewing from the wrong side of that first zipper panel piece. Um, I like to sew on top of the previous stitching. If you happen to not be able to see your stitches, maybe you used a light color of thread. You're gonna sew as before, you're gonna start and stop a half inch in uh, from each of the side edges and use the use your zipper foot to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance But if you can see the stitches go ahead and sew right on top of the previous stitching Okay, so now we're going to be doing a bit of pressing. So first off, we're going to press so that the fabrics are wrong sides together. So we'll be pressing the fabrics away from the zipper. Okay, so since this is a recessed zipper, we need to get all of the raw edges of these fabrics enclosed. So to do that, we're gonna press toward the wrong side on the three remaining raw edges by a quarter of an inch. So I find it helpful to use my ruler and my fabric marker to draw that quarter inch marking. And we're gonna use those lines for the pressing. Okay, so we'll start one edge at a time and have your wonder clips handy so that we can um, clip the fabrics after pressing. So we'll start on the short end and just get the fabrics pressed toward the wrong side. And then we'll press that long edge toward the wrong side. And you might find it helpful to press the one edge first and then kind of match that second long edge so that they're even.
we're going to take this over to the sewing machine. And as you can see, no raw edges are showing anymore. We're going to sew all the way around the entire four edges of the zipper panel using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so for any top stitching, I normally like to take the zipper foot off and switch to my regular foot. So that's what I've done here. Um, keep your zipper foot handy because we'll need to put it back on the machine in a second. But for, for the top stitching, we're going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance and your normal um, foot that you like to use on your sewing machine. Okay, so the first half of that recessed zipper, that zipper panel is attached, so now we're going to attach the, the other one. So um, we're going to flip so that the zipper is face down and grab another uh, piece of the um, zipper panel. And I sort of fussy cut mine, so I just want to make sure my blue flower is continuous, and it is. Okay. Alright, so again, the front of the zipper is going to start a half inch in from one of the short ends. So again, we're going to mark the beginning and the end of that zipper panel. Okay, and use some wonder clips to pin that in place. And actually, I'm going to just going to flip that around for one second here. And again, transfer the, the line that you made onto the zipper tape so that you can see it. Okay, put that zipper foot back on your sewing machine and we're going to start sewing from the tail end and stop sewing at that marking using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm going to unzip my zipper here just to get that zipper head out of the way. Okay, now it's time to add the last uh, zipper panel piece. So here's the, the edge that we just sewed. We're going to place that fabric right sides together with that piece and we're going to pin this edge right over here. Okay, just as before, I'm going to flip to the wrong side of the piece we just sewed and sew right on top of the previous stitching. Okay, and I feel that zipper head here, so I'm just going to unzip it the rest of the way. Okay, just as we did before, we're going to press that fabric away from the zipper. 
And then also just like you did before, you're going to press the three raw edges to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. Okay, and as before, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew those four edges using an eighth of an inch seam. Okay, you can go ahead and take your zipper foot off. We won't be needing it for any of the future steps and for the top stitching, just put your regular foot back on. Okay, so that's what that completed zipper panel looks like. That lo looks like. Put that to the side for now, and then pull out your zipper tab piece. So flip it so that it's wrong side facing up, and we're going to bring both of the short ends to meet and press it in half. Okay, open out the fabric and bring the short end at the bottom up to that crease that you just made, and give it a press. And then do the same thing for the other short end, bring it up to the crease and press it again. Okay, I'm going to bring out my ruler and I'm going to mark two vertical lines that are each a quarter of an inch in. Okay, and I'm going to press those lines toward the wrong side. And again, that's a quarter of an inch. OK, 
Okay, and then repress on those first uh, pressings that we made. So again, we pressed it in half and then we pressed in toward that center crease. And this will enclose all of the raw edges on the zipper tab. Okay, so now go ahead and pull out that zipper panel piece and we're gonna place this zipper tab on the end of the zipper just to make it look a little bit nice. So you can either bring that zipper tape up till it hits that center crease or um, I have a, a metal zipper stop over here so I'm just gonna bring it right up right before it hits that metal just so I don't have to sew over it. And just go ahead and center that zipper tab and put a wonder clip to hold it in place and we're gonna bring it over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew all the way around the outer edge using an eighth of an inch. Okay, so that zipper tab has finished the end of the zipper and um, now we're going to attach this to the lining main panels. Okay, take out one of your lining main panels and we're going to draw a horizontal line that's an inch and a half down from the top edge. Okay, and you'll do the same thing with the second lining main panel. Inch and a half down, draw a line straight across. So we're going to take out that um, zipper panel and we're going to place it at that line. So first of all, the zipper's got to go face down. So I'm going to flip it, zipper face down. And you want the long edge of the zipper panel to be at that line that you drew and it needs to be centered. So place it at the line first and then just take your ruler out and make sure that it's centered on both sides. Okay. You might want to use some traditional pins to pin this in place. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew actually uh, right on top of the previous stitching. So basically an eighth of an inch away from the edge of that zipper panel fabric. So as I sew, I'm just checking underneath to make sure that I'm still um, coming up at that line when I'm sewing that zipper panel in place. Okay, so here's what it looks like attached. And again, this is the right side of the zipper. So it's face down. And now we're gonna pull out the second lining main panel. And we've, I've already got the line on mine. And we're going to actually attach it in the same way. It might seem a little confusing um, at first, but it'll work out in the end. And again, basically, um, zipper's face down. You want that other long edge of that second half of the zipper panel to be at the line that you drew and again just use your ruler and make sure it's centered on both sides. Okay so if you feel comfortable pin that in place and we're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and sew on top of the previous stitching that you can see on the zipper panel so basically it's an eighth of an inch um, away from the bottom edge of the zipper panel. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to prepare the straps. So first let's start if you're using the cotton fabric. So you want to place the fabric so that it's wrong side facing up and we're going to press the fabric wrong sides together in half. Okay. 
Okay, so open the fabric back out again and you're gonna bring the bottom long edge up to that center crease. Okay, and then you're going to bring that top long edge down to the center crease. Okay, so you're going to refold along all of those creases <clears throat> and then the raw edges will be enclosed and you can go ahead and give that one final press. Okay, so that's how you prepare the strap made with cotton fabric. If you're using a different fabric like cork or leather, you can leave the edges raw. So <clears throat> again, I cut this one and a half inches wide. I intended to use some rivets to attach this to the outside of the bag and so I needed it to be a little bit wider than that cotton strap that we just saw. So you're going to just finger press the strap wrong sides together in half and place a wonder clip. And then you'll just repeat to go all the way down till the other end of the strap. So regardless if you're using the cotton fabric or the cork. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine <clears throat> and you're going to stitch both of the long edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and i usually like to lengthen my stitch for top stitching on straps so i'm going to go with a three millimeter stitch length okay so grab your strap and let's head over to the sewing machine Okay, so this is what the cotton strap looks like with the top stitching, so an eighth of an inch in from each of the long edges. And here's the cork strap and what that looks like after top stitching. Okay, so in the pattern instructions, um, the straps are enclosed inside the edges of the bag. So um, if you're using cotton fabric, uh, according to the pattern instructions, uh, I'm going to have you mark two inches in from each of the top side edges. Okay, we're going to use those markings for placement of the strap. Okay, so what I went ahead and did is I sort of angled um, the strap outward. And that means that it'll it'll have a nice shape when the bag comes together and you want to make sure that the strap is not twisted. Okay, so I left some overhang of the strap just so you can get um, the idea of it being angled outward. Uh, but this is what it'll look like and I highly suggest, um, especially if this bag is for you, um, after pinning, place, place it on your shoulder to make sure it's the length that you prefer. Um, if you prefer a shorter strap, go ahead and take a little bit off the ends of the strap depending on how much you want it shortened by. And just make sure you repeat that with the second strap um, just so you get the length that you like because everybody has a different preference length for the drop of the straps. Um, so this is the method for cotton fabric. If you're using cork fabric, um, I decided... Um, in order to reduce the bulk of where the strap is attached and because the cork strap can be left raw. I'm gonna wait to attach my straps till the bag is pretty much finished because I wanted to have my straps, um, the raw edges showing like this, and I thought I would put um, a rivet or two um, to finish the straps when the bag is finished. Um, 
But for this method, um, again, it's not in the pattern instructions, but I'll show you in this video. Um, for this method, this will only work with fabrics that can be cut raw like, like cork or leather. So if you're using the cotton fabric, just make sure um, you use this method. Again, we'll be marking two inches in from the sides and angle the straps outward. Um, I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch those straps down using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You go ahead and repeat this to attach the <clears throat> second strap to the second exterior main panel. Okay, now you want to take out your exterior side panel, and we're actually going to fold that in half so that both of the raw ends meet, the short ends. Okay, so here's my two raw ends again, and we're going to take the ruler and measure down nine inches from that short end, and just go ahead and draw a line straight across. Okay, next we're gonna be making two more measurements. We're gonna measure an inch in from this top side edge and same thing over here, an inch in. And you don't have to draw a line straight across, just kind of make a marking at the top. Okay, so we're gonna use those two lines at the top to connect to this point nine inches down over here and they're gonna be diagonal lines. So take your ruler and connect um, the marking up here down to that nine inch mark down there. Okay, now we're gonna use the scissors and cut off um, this little chunk over here and this chunk right here. So you're gonna be cutting through both layers of fabric. Okay, so if you used a fusible interfacing here, you're, you're good to go. If you used a sew-in interfacing like I did, since you cut that edge over there, you're just gonna rebase those cut edges of the fabric. And this just gives um, the side panel a nice shape, uh, especially on the sides and the bottom of the bag. Okay, now you wanna grab one of your exterior main panels. And just as a reminder, this is my cork bag, so I'm attaching my straps at the end. If you're using cotton fabric, this piece will have that strap sewn to it already. Okay, so we're gonna attach the exterior side panel to the exterior main panel. I find it helpful to find the center point on the exterior main panel, and to do that, you can just go ahead and pull out your pattern piece and just mark um, the bottom where the center is. And same thing with the exterior main panel, we'll just fold that in half and mark where the center is um, on both sides. And this just helps us center both the front and back of the bag and um, make sure the fabric is evenly distributed. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my center marking and pin it in place right where that center marking is at the bottom of the bag. Okay, and then I'll put two more clips on either side. And then I'm gonna take the top edge of the side panel and pin that to the top edge of the exterior main panel. Okay, and then same thing on this side. And by pinning the center and pinning the top, um, you'll be able to evenly distribute the fabric as opposed to, say, if you pinned from here to here, you might end up with a little bit of extra fabric up here. Um, this way you can pin everything evenly. So go ahead and pin everything the rest of the way. We're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and sew the pinned edge using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so as I approach this curved edge down here, um, and you can certainly do this before you even start sewing, but I like to make little clips um, less than a quarter of an inch high. And those little clips 
um, sort of help spread the fabric apart because the main panel has a curve in it, but the side panel is just a straight, straight piece. And having those little clips helps that fabric spread um, more evenly so you can get a nice corner without having a pucker. And another thing that I'll be doing too, as I get into this corner, I'll stop a few times, um, smooth out my fabric with the presser foot up, and then I'll keep sewing. Okay, so now we're going to add that second exterior main panel. So again, we're going to mark the center of the main panel. And then it's going to go right sides together with the exterior main panel. So that means all of your exterior fabric will be on the inside. Okay, again, we're going to pin the same way as we did before. We're going to pin the center first and then those top two corners. And again, we're gonna sew this pinned edge using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so this time I'm gonna sew with the side panel against the bed of my sewing machine. It can be sewn either way, um, and you might have a personal preference, but for, for this portion, I just found it easier sewing with the side panel against the bed of my sewing machine. Um, same thing as before, we're gonna use a half inch seam allowance. Okay, we're going to repeat that same process with the lining. So again, um, we're going to take this lining side panel, bring both of the short ends so that they meet, so that they're right sides together. And then we're going to measure down nine inches from that top edge. 
Okay, and again, we're gonna mark an inch in from each of the sides and draw a diagonal line down to the nine inch. Okay, and again, we're gonna cut and we're gonna discard that little triangle scrap. Okay, now it's time to attach the lining main panels to that lining side panel. So again, we're gonna find the center point of that lining side panel and make a mark. And we're gonna do the same thing for the bottoms of the lining main panels. Okay, so there's the bottom center and same thing on the second lining main panel. Okay, so now it's time to pin that lining in place and you may find it easier to unzip your zipper to do this. Basically, we're pushing the zipper and the zipper panel out of the way. So when we're sewing the side panel, we won't be sewing over the zipper panel or the zipper at all. So just keep that pushed out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my lining side panel and I'm just gonna pin it in place along that bottom center marking that we just made. Okay, and I'll pin that top corner. Okay, pin the rest of the way, and as before, we're gonna sew that side panel in place using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, now it's time to attach that second lining main panel to the lining side panel. When you place it, just make sure that the zipper over here is not twisted. Um, just as before, we're gonna line up those center markings. The only difference this time is when we go to sew, we need to leave an opening about five inches long centered on the bottom of the bag. So when you go to sew, um, just stop your stitches over here and then take them up back over here um, same as before, a half inch seam allowance.
Okay, before we keep going, we're gonna trim that seam allowance down to about a quarter of an inch, and there's no need to measure. Um, just cut it, um, eyeball it, uh, approximately in half. And trimming that seam allowance down helps, um, especially at the top edge of the bag, make it look less bulky when we sew the exterior to the lining. Okay, and you're gonna do the same thing for the lining, and I've already trimmed it down, so same thing, trim the seam allowance to approximately in half. Okay, so now we're ready to sew the exterior to the lining. So go ahead and turn your exterior right side facing out. And there's no need to press it right now, we'll do all the pressing when the bag's all finished. Okay, so we're gonna slide the lining over the exterior so that the fabrics will be right sides together. And you wanna make sure that you have that zipper panel and the end of the zipper tucked to the inside. We don't wanna leave anything hanging out. So here's, here's the zipper right here. Just make sure that zipper's tucked down and to the inside of the bag. All right, now we're gonna pin that top edge right sides together using the wonder clips and you want to make sure um, the side seams so there's two on each side you want to make sure that they're aligned so you can go ahead and use your fingers uh, to press the seams open right at the top of the bag and then just pin those seams pin those seams first and then we'll pin the rest of the bag afterwards Okay, so after those side panels are pinned, just go ahead and pin the front and the back of the bag, right sides together. We're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew the entire top edge using a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so let's head over to the sewing machine.
Okay, just as we did with the exterior and the lining in the previous step, we're going to trim again this seam at the top of the bag in half, so to about a quarter of an inch. And then reach your, bag, your, reach your hand through that opening that you left in the lining and pull the bag right side out. Okay, now we're going to finger press the lining and the exterior wrong sides together. If you're using cork fabric like I am or leather or vinyl, you don't want to press that top edge. You want to finger press and just use some Wonder Clips instead. And just so you're not alarmed, um, this is the version that I made uh, where I did not attach the straps yet. That'll be at the very end. Um, if you're using cotton fabric, uh, when you turn your bag right side out, um, this is what your bag will look like if you've added the straps already. Um, so let's go ahead and, and pin this wrong sides together. Um, I'm going to use Wonder Clips instead. Um, so either way, either use your iron or use your Wonder Clips to press that top edge. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch this top edge of the bag using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And obviously you want that zipper panel pushed down toward the inside of the bag. But again, um, top edge, quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, for the top stitching on the bag, I switched out to my Teflon foot since I'm using the cork fabric. And I also am going to lengthen my stitch length. For regular sewing, I normally use a two and a half millimeters, but since this top edge of the bag is starting to get thick, I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters. Okay, so after that final top stitching, um, if you made your bag with the, the cotton fabric straps, this is what your bag will look like. And if you made your bag with cork or leather, um, there's the top stitching right there on the top of the bag. So I went ahead and attached my straps with uh, two rivets on each end of the strap. Um, you can place them however you'd like. I measured down an inch and three quarters and two inches from the side and that's where the corner of my strap hits. But again, uh, whatever your preference, as long as you replicate that on, on all sides of the straps. Um, I just wanted to mention um, if you're using rivets or Chicago screws, screws to attach your strap, uh, you want to make sure that um, you move the lining out of the way so my lining still has that opening in it. 
And when I attached, uh, made my holes and attached my rivets, I made sure the lining was pushed out of the way so I was only making the holes through uh, the strap fabric and the exterior, not making a hole in my lining. All right, so I've got all of my strap ends attached. Um, if you made your bag with cotton fabric, go ahead and use your iron to press all of the edges of the bag. Uh, since my cork fabric, I don't like to iron it, I put some wonder clips on there for a few hours and that kind of um, makes the seams nice and crisp without having to iron them. So here's the front of the bag. Um, I had the wonder clips on earlier and I took them off. Um, the last thing that remains is to close the opening in your lining. You can either do this by hand um, with a slip stitch so you'll just kind of fold um, the edges of the opening in toward the inside by about a quarter of an inch. Um, so you can either do that by hand or I'm sort of a lazy sewist so I'll just do mine by machine. So um, I'm using my wonder clips to hold this opening closed and I'm just going to go ahead and use an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to close that opening and honestly nobody will see that opening if you do close it by machine because once you put all the items in the bag um, all your purse things will will kind of um, cover that that closed seam so that's the last step of the bag and you're finished thanks so much for sewing along with me i can't wait to see your finished bag be sure to join my facebook group and post a photo of your bag there and don't forget if i can do it so can you